The ocean is a vast, mysterious expanse, and the deeper you go, the stranger it becomes. Humanity has only explored around 5% of this dark, cold void that engulfs our planet. And just recently, it's gotten even weirder. Five kilometers below the surface, in complete darkness, a mysterious source of oxygen has just been discovered. The truth behind this discovery is much more perplexing and may reshape our understanding of science, and it all happened by accident. In 2013, Andrew Sweetman, a researcher at the Scottish Association for Marine Science, was investigating the clarion Clipperton Zone, a vast marine ecosystem between Hawaii and Mexico larger than India. As part of his research, Sweetman's team deployed machines to measure oxygen levels on the seafloor. The devices sealed off sections of the seabed and monitored oxygen changes over several days. Typically, oxygen levels were decrease as microorganisms can consumed it through respiration. But this time, something strange happened. Oxygen levels increased over time, indicating something was producing oxygen, not consuming it, a phenomenon Sweetman had never encountered before. Initially, Sweetman and his team thought their sensors were faulty. After all, every study in the deep sea had only observed oxygen being consumed, never produced. They put it down to bad data and moved on to other experiments. It wasn't until 20 21, eight years later, that Sweetman revisited the region on another research expedition and found the same result. But this time, the team used a different method of measurement. Now, two independent approaches showed identical results, leading Sweetman to realize that for nearly a decade, he may have been overlooking a groundbreaking discovery happening 5,000 meters below the ocean surface. Fast forward to September 2023 when Sweetman and his colleague, Franz Geiger, professor of chemistry at Northwestern University, coined the term dark oxygen for this mysterious phenomenon. But why call it dark? Well, scientists love to use dark to describe things they can't yet explain, like dark matter or dark energy, and this oxygen production fits right into that category. So what could be causing this strange oxygen production, and why is it so significant? To answer that, we need to revisit how oxygen typically functions in the deep ocean. Most of Earth's oxygen is produced through photosynthesis, a process carried out by plants, algae, and certain bacteria. It involves chlorophyll capturing sunlight and splitting water and carbon dioxide to produce sugar and, importantly, oxygen. On land, oxygen disperses through atmospheric circulation, but in the ocean, it's a bit more complicated. Oxygen from the atmosphere can diffuse into surface waters, and photosynthetic microorganisms in shallow waters produce oxygen directly into the ocean. However, sunlight can only penetrate about 200 meters deep, meaning oxygen rapidly decreases beyond that point. So how does oxygen reach the deep ocean. Through a process called thermohaline circulation, polar waters absorb large amounts of oxygen, and because cold water is denser, it sinks to the ocean floor, moving oxygen-rich water through a global conveyor belt that takes centuries to circulate. This slow process provides the oxygen needed for life to thrive in deep sea ecosystems, though often in weird and unexpected ways. Sweetman's discovery of oxygen being produced at 5,000 meters without photosynthesis challenges this understanding. And here's where things get interesting. The seafloor in the clarion Clipperton zone is covered with small, rock-like clusters known as polymetallic nodules. These nodules are rich in metals like cobalt, nickel, and manganese, which are highly valuable and targeted by deep sea mining companies. Sweetman hypothesized that these nodules might act like natural batteries, generating small electric currents that could split water into hydrogen and oxygen through a process called electrolysis. Now to test this theory, the team recreated the conditions of the seafloor in a lab. They sterilized their samples to rule out any oxygen-producing organisms and monitored the oxygen levels over several days. Just as they had discovered in the ocean, oxygen levels steadily increased, even though no photosynthetic life was present. In fact, oxygen levels eventually tripled, though they plateaued after a few days. 
To further investigate, the team sent samples to Geiger's lab in Northwestern University where they found something surprising. The surface of a single nodule generated a voltage of up to 0.95 volts. For comparison, it takes about 1.5 volts to split seawater using electrolysis. So the nodules were clearly generating electricity, just not quite enough for complete electrolysis. Still. This suggests a natural geological battery could be at work, with the oxygen production slowing down as the available energy is depleted. What's more, the rate of oxygen production seemed to increase with the size of the nodules, suggesting that the larger the nodule, the more oxygen it could generate. But this raises more questions. If these nodules are acting like batteries, why haven't they depleted over time? And what could keep this process going for millions of years, given that these nodules grow incredibly slowly, just one to 10 millimeters per million years? Some researchers suggest that sediment removal, possibly caused by the landers disturbing the seabed, might expose electrochemically active sites on the nodules. However, this explanation seems uh, a bit weak. The rate at which these nodules grow and accumulate sediment is so slow that it's hard to believe sediment removal could play a major role in oxygen production. But as of now, there's little evidence to suggest otherwise. Now, the implications of this discovery are massive, especially for deep sea mining companies, which have long eyed these nodules for their valuable metals. If these nodules are crucial to oxygen production in the deep ocean, mining them could have devastating effects on marine ecosystems and potentially on global oxygen levels. In fact, past research from the 1980s found that mined seabed areas became dead zones or even bacteria struggled to survive, while nearby unmined areas thrived with marine life. These dead zones persist for decades and the impact on deep sea biodiversity is significant. The biodiversity in nodule rich areas is higher than in even the most diverse tropical rainforests and any disturbances could cause irreversible damage. This new discovery could force us to rethink deep sea mining, but industry representatives are already pushing back. Patrick Downs from The Metals Company, one of the mining firms that funded Sweetman's research, expressed doubts about the findings, claiming the oxygen increases could be due to contamination. Interesting that he's from The Metals Company. A rebuttal article from the company is reportedly on the way, but if this oxygen source is real, mining nodules could have much larger consequences than we've anticipated. Even more interesting is how this discovery could affect the way we search for life on other planets. We often look for molecular oxygen as a key indicator of life on exoplanets. But if oxygen can be produced without biological processes, our assumptions might need to change. It's possible that some of the oxygen we detect on distant planets is the result of abiotic processes, meaning processes not involving life. This could mean that future discoveries of oxygen-rich planets may not necessarily point to alien life, but rather to geological processes like the one found in the deep sea. So what do you think? Could these polymetallic nodules really be functioning as geological batteries? Or is there something else happening here that we just don't yet understand? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Personally, I'm still skeptical of the geobattery hypothesis. It's kind of hard to imagine these natural batteries functioning for such long periods without depleting. But with so many unknowns, this discovery could rewrite the rules of marine science.